Blossom, I can't believe Purse wants to take over the world! But I wonder how. You know, we should go on the internet to see what else we can learn about these guys. Jet, you wanna log on for me? Wait, what are you doing with that log? No! Ah! Gwen, I need help! Not Gwen. Long Gwen Silva. I found a pirate game on the Go Get It website. Treasure hunting on the high seas. See, I have to... Oh, enter password to continue. Enter password? That's not part of the game. Well, I was on the West Webo. <laughs> oh. Oh. It looks like you entered the secret password. Wow, with, with your forehead. Location of Golden Fetchy. Interesting. It's showing a map. And the location of something called the Golden Fetchy. Agents of Purs, retrieve Golden Fetchy. Bring to Purs headquarters. Repeat, retrieve Fetchy. Glenn, this could be important. Where is the Golden Fetchy? I'll reveal the island's whereabouts on one condition. Now you're gonna make me dress up as a buccaneer, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous, Uncle Wop. You shall be my parrot. Parrot? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Can somebody tell me what happened in the singing cats? Here come the contestants now! He cooks a mean stir-fry, he totally walks. Get it? Walks? In sixth place, it's Marco! She once spent the whole day in a tree. In fifth place, it's Shreya. He flew a plane with his father. In fourth place, it's Jay. He once hiked seven miles in the middle of winter. In third place, it's Mark. She doesn't like it when her sister chews loudly. In second place, it's Emmy. She trained her dog to beg on her hind legs. In first place, it's Ruby! Hello, and welcome again to Fetch, where... No, no, no. You're doing it all wrong. Oh, wow, me. Ahoy, you scurvy wand wubbers. Avast your gabbing and prepare for an adventure full of sea breezes and walking the plank. Wow! <laughs> Never mind, guys. I had to let my nephew, Glenn, join the show today. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Hello, everyone, and Uncle Wuff, it is not Gwen, it is Long Gwen Silva. And why are you not dressed as we agreed? Uh, maybe because I don't want to dress as a parrot. Okay, I guess you don't want this map either. I'll just delete it. No, 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 fine, fine, I'll dress as a parrot. Hang on. There. Yeah, yeah. You like that? All right. Now look, guys. Glenn accidentally got past the security wall on the Go Get It website and found the map of some unidentified island showing the location of the Golden Fetchy. From what we can gather, PERS, the organization that runs Go Get It, has wanted to get their hands on the Golden Fetchy for quite some time. Years ago, they were transporting the Golden Fetchy to PERS headquarters, but it was ejected onto an island to escape capture. It now appears that Purs has identified the island and the agents of Purs are on the move. Uh-oh. And you think this has something to do with Great Uncle Wink and Great Aunt Dinah? I don't know if this has anything to do with my parents, Glenn, but it might. So we have to get that fetchy before the agents of Purs. So what we should do is get ourselves a speedboat. Sorry, Uncle Wuff. Pirates used sailboats. <sighs> Fine, we won't have a speedboat. But we will have challenge number one. A swashbuckling pursuit of treasure on the high seas. Treya, Emmy, Mark, Jay, Marco, yes, Ruby. Yeah. We'll be rendezvousing with Captain Mike and... Don't forget the gob. What? The gob. Oh, the guard. Yes. Your buccaneer outfits are near the wall, and a map and instructions are in the mailbox. So, go fetch. Yeah. I'm in the train.
Good luck, guys. For our six brave contestants today, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's see how they're doing. A wheel pirate adventure. Ooh, cool pirate costumes. Unlike my uncool parrot costume. Oh, the wife of a pirate is magical and dangerous. Life on the sea is the life that's for me. Uh, Glenn, this is not a musical. Sorry, Uncle Bob. Hey, are you Captain Mike? I am Captain Mike. It's a great day for sailing. But before we can go sailing, I need to make sure that you guys understand something very important. Does anybody know why it is that boats float? Density, like the boat isn't as dense as the water. Excellent. Doesn't it have to do with like buoyancy? Exactly, buoyancy. Buoyancy is the force that keeps things afloat. This is a ball of clay. Do you think this will float? No. Uh, a clay ball will not float. What do you think will happen when I put it in the water? Sink to the bottom. Sink the bottom. You're pretty sure about that? Yeah. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Does that mean we can't make a boat out of this? No, make it like a boat. Like, make it like a boat, okay. You need to make it so it, it's curves. less dense than the water. This it's the copy. same weight, right? Yeah. Right. What are we doing to the weight? Distributing. Spreading it Surface out. area. Can I take a shot at it? Here you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> he is shaping it like a boat. See, spreading out the bottom and then putting sides on it. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Good. We put a couple masts on that, some sails, and we're good to go. So to make something that usually sinks float, you have to make it take up more space. Let's go sailing. Adventure, adventure on the high seas, on the high seas. Ugh. Arg. Arg. That's right, lots of args and squawking. That's your job. All right, I forgot I'm your parrot. Rawr. Watch where you're going. You're going to make a sharp right-hand turn. You ready? Now just straight down the fairway. <laughs> Jay is actually steering a boat. You know, I don't even have a license yet, or a learner's permit, or anything. Arg. Give it a little juice if you want. Then we'll get somewhere we can raise sails. This is awesome. So's that mustache. Ready on the main? Ready! All the way! Wow, that's a pirate flag right there. It's called the Jawi Waja, Uncle Wub. This one. Oh, that's wow. Go, guys! Get that golden veggie and find my parents! Oh, Excellent. Cool. That's awesome. Oh, it's totally awesome, Uncle Wub. Does that mean I can get out of the parrot costume? No. I'm sailing the ship to the golden fetchy. I'm sailing the ship to the golden fetchy. I'm, I'm sailing, sailing the, the ship, ship to the, the golden, golden fetchy. fetchy. Ooh. I'm sailing your ship to the fetchy. Nothing rhymes with fetchy. I like that, though. Huh, maybe this should be a musical. Captain Mike, we have this uh, map from Ruff. Can you um, try and help us find our route to get to the Golden Fetchy? Absolutely. Hey, look at that on the map. There's a GF on that island. That must stand for Golden Fetchy. How do you figure out where you are on the map? Well, I guess you need to know where you are on that map before you can figure out how to get to the Golden Fetchy. What I'm going to do is teach you guys how to take bearings. Wait, so what's a bearing? A bearing is basically a line of direction from where you are right now. Oh, OK, yeah. So if we all take a compass. Whoa, whoa, compasses? We don't have a GPS. Sorry, Uncle Wolf. Pirates didn't use GPS. I know, I know. Hold the compass up. You can sight over the compass at different things, like, for example, Marblehead Light. Mm -hmm. Keep that red needle right on north, and you'll see it's just south. So now we can make one line of position on our map, OK, that points to Marblehead Light. So Captain Mike drew a line on the map and made it go in the direction he read on the edge of the compass. But one line is not going to do it. Like, if we're somewhere on that line, that's helpful, but it doesn't tell us whether we're here or, or here. here. If you take two bearings and they cross, you could say, well, we're close to the intersection. If you take three bearings, you get a triangle, and you're even more sure that you're probably somewhere in that triangle. So that's let's good. use the compass right now to take quick bearings on Baker's Island light and on Hospital Point light. Ah, oh, Baker's Island. That reminds me. Chet, please place an order for lunch. Baker's Island light. That'd be over there. I think it's east. Yeah. OK, the next one we need to find is Hospital Point. Northwest. So we must be somewhere within this triangle right here. Yes. So what direction do we need to go in to get there? I think we kind of have to go a little southeast. Right. That must be the island. That's right there. The yeah. We're close, guys. Really? There's the Golden Fetchy Island. Oh, oh, golden. We 
have to find the golden fetchy before furs. Whoa! Yeah, this place looks familiar. Wait, wait, Whoa. go for gold? This was on Game Show Island. You guys, this is Game Show Island. Game Show Island? We're back on Game Show Island? This is not fair. I've already lost the fetchers on Game Show Island this season. Okay, well, the last time we were here, we split into teams. So let's split into our teams, and then we can try and find the golden fetchy. We'll go this way, Morgan. Don't lose the hats. And we have apparently three telephones in the middle of a field, not plugged in anything. Oh, the Golden Fetchy Deluxe. Mm. Instructed There's a picture of the Golden Fetchy. And that looks like an owner's manual for Hold the on. Golden Fetchy. Blossom, you downloaded the manual already? Huh, why would a statue need an owner's manual? Wow, solid component. Your Golden Fetchy Deluxe comes with a set of three phones. You must use the phone with the lowest density. Perform a buoyancy oh. test. Find the phone that is most buoyant. This is so weird. What do phones have to do with the Golden Fetchy? Oh, the manual says that if they find the right phone, they can call the Golden Fetchy and find its location? Find the phone with the lowest density. And that means how much, like, stuff's in it? Yeah, but they're all the same size. So the one that's the least dense should weigh the least. So it's weigh the least. So density is how heavy something is for how much space it takes up. So if one of the phones is heavier, it would be more dense. And if one phone is lighter than the others, it would be less dense and more likely to float. Okay, the first phone weighs 1,323 grams. Okay. 1,828. 1,828 grams. So this phone is heavier than the last one. This one, 926 grams. 926! The red phone weighs the least! So this one is the least dense, but is it really buoyant? Okay, so now let's test it for buoyancy! I think one of us has to take off our shoes and then go into the water. You can do it. It's cool with you. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Okay. <sighs> oh my gosh, it's freezing. You can do it! Look at Shweya, waving the frigid waters. Just drop it. He'll use this phone to call the Golden Fetchy. But we need a phone number. Be patient, my faithful poet. The story is still unfolding. I haven't heard you squawk for a while, Uncle Waff. Ah. Whoa, steep. Ugh. Whoa. We need it. Hey, check it out. Wait a second. Golden Fetchy Deluxe. Cool, owner's manual. Liquid component. Huh. First, there was a solid component. Now there's a liquid component. Your Golden Fetchy Deluxe comes with a set of four liquids. Arrange each liquid in order of density from least to greatest. Record the container numbers to find the last four digits of your unit's phone number. All right, let's do it. Okay. If we were to pour fresh water in this container, and we were to pour in a liquid that was more dense, wouldn't the denser liquid sink to the bottom? Right, like I know that oil and water don't mix, right? Right. So if we poured the oil on top of the water, what do you think would happen? Doesn't the oil float? Well, you want to see? Yeah, let's test it. Okay. Okay, the liquid containers have numbers on them. They need to arrange the liquids from lowest density to highest density to get the Golden Fetchy's okay. phone number. So this is fresh water. Right. So it has a little bit of food coloring in it. So the fresh water is labeled number three. There you go. This is number five. Okay. okay. We're now mixing the corn oil with the blue water. Okay, I can do this. I, oops. Nah. Just doing it, Uncle Wob. Oh, I know. These wings aren't helping. So you can see that this is the oil, that's the water, and the and the oil is basically right on top of the water. Right. So that means that the oil is more buoyant than the water. So that it's means that dense. the water's more dense. The water's more dense. Okay. So far, the water's more dense than the oil. So the salt water is dyed pink. Yeah. Man, look what that salt water's doing to the water and the oil. No, wait a second, wait a second. Yes, Here it's comes. going under. There's pink underneath the blue. Um, but once the bubbles pop, it's becoming more dense than the water. All righty. Looks like the salt water is more dense than the fresh water. And they're both more dense than the corn oil, which is floating on top. So the last one to test is the corn syrup. Oh. 
This is heavy. This looks like molasses. Oh, I don't know. Looks like. Okay. So finish the experiment. The corn syrup is denser than the salt water, which is denser than the fresh water, which is denser than the corn oil. Okay, here's what we got. From most dense to least dense, it goes corn syrup, which sinks to the bottom, then salt water, which floats on the corn syrup, then fresh water, which is floating on the salt water, and finally, the corn oil, which floats on top of everything. Five, three, oh, nine. Five, three, we oh, nine! We are one step closer! Wubbers, e wen wubbers Land lovers? That's why, wen wubbers Go. Good work, guys. Just leave that there. Tangle, clean it up. Come yeah. on, look at this. What is this thing? Oh, look at this. Gas component. Wait, gases have different densities, too? Your Golden Fetchy Deluxe comes with a set of three gases. Arrange each gas in order of density from least to greatest. And look at that. There's a scale. And uh, according to the manual, there's double-sided tape on it. Oh, we have balloons. Oh, we can blow up the balloons. Okay, let's go, pirates. Let's do this. So if density is mass and volume, we need to keep the volume the same so we can compare the mass. Uh, Blossom, translation, please. Oh, so volume is how much space something takes up, and mass is kind of like how much it weighs. Okay, that makes sense. I think what we can do is we can have it the approximate size of the hat. If they fill up balloons with each gas and make sure they're all the same size, then the one that weighs the least is the least dense and the most buoyant, just like with the phones. And they're using that hat to make sure the balloons are all the same size. Now that is clever. So this is the CO2 balloon. All right. This is nitrogen. All right, here. That should be good. Perfect. Okay, now that the balloons are the same size, it's time to weigh them. I think the tape will keep the balloons from blowing away. Wow. Oh, wow. The carbon dioxide is definitely it's heavier right than the nitrogen. Hi, right, look at that. Carbon dioxide is tipping the scale. It's heavier than the nitrogen. Now let's try the helium. That should be very light. Without the tape, that helium balloon would just float away. I have a feeling that carbon dioxide will be heavier. All right, well, let's see. It is heavier, that is true. So now we need to find out if nitrogen is more dense than helium. Okay, it's balancing out. Helium. And helium is our featherweight champion. Helium. Perfect. Arrange each gas in order of density from least to greatest. Record the container numbers in the space below. Okay, so carbon dioxide, number seven, is more dense than nitrogen, number six, or helium, number one. And I am stuck to the scale. Great. One, six, seven. Those are the first three digits of this phone number. One, Woo! six, seven, five, three, oh, yes. nine. That sounds kind of familiar. For some reason, I now want to do karaoke. Guys, oh, God. we have numbers. This is intense. We got our number. Our digits are one, six, and seven. Okay. Oh, Blossom, hold me. Ours are five, three, oh, nine. Yep, five, three, oh, nine. One, six, Kids, that's called Seven. a rotary phone. Mm -hmm. Ever see one of these before? Yeah. We ring. You are very cold. What? Be be very cold. Someone said that we're really cold. Well, who said you're cold? Maybe it's like a hot and cold. Like closer you get to the what the golden fetchy, the hotter we are. Okay. I get it. Okay, so we're okay, cold. Okay, so walk one way. Listen to the voice. I love this game. Getting colder. Oh, okay, we're getting colder. This way, this way, this way. Keep going, keep going this way. All right. Warmer. Run this way, run! Run! run. Keep, run. keep going. Warmer. Warmer. Getting warmer. Okay, what are we now? Who's talking to them? It's gotta be the golden fetchy, Uncle Wop. It's got a twacking device. Getting Wait, colder. Okay, we're, we're a little colder. Now you're colder? Okay. okay. Yeah, are we hotter or colder? Morning. Hot. Hot. Hotter. Hot. Let's go. Keep going. Hurry, guys, hurry. Hotter. Like this purse is watching us oh, right man. now. Go there it is! The Golden Fetchy! Stuck in a tree! Come on, pirates, come on! You got it, you got it! All right. Yeah, nice yes. job! We beat hers! We're better than cats! <laughs> Not you, Blossom. Does this open up to anything? Does it? Well, let's not break it. Don't break it! What's inside there? Whoa. Look at all those wires. Blinky light thingies. Ralph, this looks like it's more than a statue. Yeah, 
Guys, I think the best thing to do is just bring it back to Studio G. Yes, yeah, take it back to Studio G. Let's go. All right, can I get five? Right. One, two, three. Oh. This is an important moment in the history of the show. We actually beat Go Get It in something. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Rob. Oh, I'm so proud of you guys. Hi, oh, thanks, Rob. Thank you. Ruby, please take a picture of my pirates. Gotcha. All right. Um, I'll go off. I don't believe now is the right time to take a picture. Of course it is. Put golden veggie behind us. All right. Say cheese, Ready? everybody. Right. It was a nefarious we paw. We smile, guys. Hey, is that a paw? Wait a minute. Beautiful picture. What is that? That's a cat paw. Though you did tell them to take that photo. Aww. All right, come back to Studio G. We'll figure out what to do next. Ah. Let's get our adventures back in here. Our six swashbuckling sailors Emmy, Mark, Jay, Ruby, Shreya, and Marco. Hey, Oh, guys, I shouldn't have had you take a picture. It's totally my fault. No, we should have been holding it. Right. Blossom and Glenn are getting a fix on the Fetchy's tracking signal. And when they have it, I am sending you back out. Awesome. So until then, let's get you some points. Yeah! Can you use your navigational know-how to sail a schooner back to Game Show Island. For that, I'm awarding all of you 40 points. Yeah! But have asked me, buckos. That means, but wait, there's more, according to my pirate translator. For using your swashbuckling science skills to figure out the densities of solids, liquids, and gases, another 40 points for everybody. Yeah! That leaves you all with 80 points. Woo! Yay! 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 But even though you're about to leave again at any moment, has this dog given out all the points he can give? I don't uh... think so. Oh, oh, let me do it, Uncle Up. Okay, Glenn, go ahead. <clears throat> what time is it? Bonus points! Today, 15 bonus points go to the fetcher who braved the treacherous, frigid, shark-infested New England waters in bare feet! Oh my gosh, it's freezing. Shreya, with 95 points, you're today's daily winner! Now, Shreya, I have your two rotary telephones of equal density. Under one, a prize to please any treasure-seeking buccaneer. Under the other, eh. So which will it be? Yeah. Old rotary uh, phone A B or B? B yeah, I'm gonna go for a B, but for buoyancy. Now, now, Jay, let's not try to influence our fellow Fetcher in her decision. You know what? I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna go with A, huh? Sorry, Jay. She's going out on her own on this one. Sorry, man. But we appreciate your counsel. Don't be sad, Jay. You know we love you. Aww. <laughs> Trey, your prize is in the mailbox if you'd like it. Oh. Or you can give it a Jay if you want to cheer him up. Four tickets to Codzilla? Oh, man, I'm going out right. of my castle. Thanks, Rob. Codzilla, a super fast and super splashy high-speed boat ride. It is awesome. You want to take me? Yeah. Uh, I do have four course. tickets. There's four tickets. Yeah. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. Enjoy it, Trey. It should be an awesome experience. Thank and you, Rob. Hang on a second. That's weird. Just a minute, guys. One of the rotary phones is ringing. Well, pick it up. Well, yeah, yeah, pick it up. Hello? Rough, kitsy grandma. I'm using this phone in case your other ones are bugged. Bugged? bugged? What? You mean someone might be listening? Oh, I hate to get you involved in this. After all, you're just a game show host. But your parents clearly believe in you, or else they wouldn't have had you get the fabulous four. Grandma, what are you talking about? What is going on this season? The Golden Fetchy isn't just a statue. It's a brainwashing device. Hers is going to use it during the Go Get It season finale. But that means... Yes, everyone who watches Go Get It today, and they have a much bigger audience than you. I know. What's going to happen to them, Grandma? Well, all the viewers are going to think... They're cats! What? Oh, no, 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 and no, that's no. how Purse is going to take over the world! <laughs> Uncle Wub, we've got the coordinates, and we've got a weeding on the hygrometer! Uh, the what? The, the what? What's a hygrometer? A moisture detector, obviously. And according to the hygrometer, Pooh's headquarters is surrounded by water. What? That makes no sense. All right, Fetchers, 
This just got a little deeper. Blossom, send the coordinates to the fetchers. Guys, new instructions are in the mailbox. And bring the wagon with you. And don't forget the fabulous four. You know the states, fetchers. So go get that fetchy and go fetch! Okay, let's go. Right, guys, grab the back here. Let's go. Everybody grab one. I'm so uh, So, Grandma, how did you know about the Golden Fetchy? Oh, when I was younger, I used to work as a spy. You did? For the good guys, of course. But I haven't done that for months. Months? Oh, dear. I'm so worried about your Fetchies. Will the Fetchers find the Golden Fetchy before it's too late? Will the whole world think they're cats? Some of these questions will be answered in the super exciting season finale of Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Hey, you want to learn more about navigation? Let's dig a little deeper. What does this compass do? It finds the magnetic force in the Earth. It's pointing to something else that's magnetic, right? The magnetic north. The north, north yeah. magnetic pole, exactly. Which is close to north, but it's not exactly the same. Wait, so compasses aren't pointing to the north pole? It's not a big difference, luckily, where we live. What a thought. What a brilliant idea was that? Shit. And if you want to dig even deeper, go to pbskidsgo.org. Okay, one last thing. Not only do I host my own television show, but I have a fantastic website, too. Check it out. It's more fun than turning round and round in circles before a nap. pbskidsgo.org.